Hello everyone, welcome to another homebrew update. I'm your host Troy and over the past two weeks we had smaller stuff kind of happen in the homebrew scene as far as a PS4, PS Vita, Nintendo Switch and things like that. But it's still good stuff nonetheless. So let's go ahead and get started. Are you one of the people who still have a Nintendo Switch on version 1.0.0? If you are, you are in luck because there is actually a web applet on that version. Well, kind of. What you have to do is you have to actually get the demo or game of the Japanese version Puyo Puyo Tetris. And inside of that game there's actually a manual that then loads a web applet. So essentially, if you know how to do it, you can actually redirect that website that it goes to. It's like a Sega website it goes to. And then you'll be able to go to say YouTube and things like that. It's just really cool that there's actually a way to run a web applet on the very first version of the Nintendo Switch. So that way you can, you know, run Switch or something like that. As always, there will be a link to exactly how to do it in the description below. It gives you the full instructions and exactly what game you need and all that. The Switch is a cool little handheld, the fact that it is actually a hybrid console where you can you know, put it on the dock and actually use it just as a handheld as I mentioned earlier. But, can it run Doom? Yes, yes it can. A user over on YouTube actually posted a video of him running Doom on the Switch. Now, it is not your conventional way of actually, you know, running it straight on the Switch, but all the code from Doom is actually on the Switch itself, while the video and sound is running onto the computer. Well, really, there's no sound or video on the Switch for Doom, but like I said, it's running on the computer. So, I don't know how he managed to kind of read the memory and make it do that, but he did, and I think this is definitely a right step direction into the world of homebrew for the Nintendo Switch. Next up, we have an update to a popular homebrew over on the 3DS, TW Loader. But what is new in the newest version of the TW Loader, version 6.2.0? They added a quick start menu. Essentially what it does is it skips a lot of the Wi-Fi stuff as well as the banner cache. It makes it so it just runs quicker on startup, which is really handy. I remember having quite a few load times whenever I had to boot it up or you know get it to update and things like that. So I'm glad that is actually now feature. Over on the PlayStation side of things, we have a new PS4 update, version 5.0.3. This update currently, no one knows what it does. I am guessing though it actually fixes uh, some exploits and some bugs and things like that, but Sony actually hasn't updated their websites with the current features added to it. But I'm sure it patched the next thing I'm actually about to tell you, which is emulators running on the PS4 on version 5.0.1. Yes, the user Morpheus1987 over on Twitter said that he got emulators running on the PS4 version 5.0.1. Now, the one emulator he got, well, he got two emulators running, but the one emulator I remember specifically is the Sega Game Gear, which is really cool. And the next emulator he actually wants to try and get running is the NES, which which is awesome. I want to see that. With all the people who have a compatible PS3, have you ran the PS3 exploit yet? If you have, make sure to check out all the homebrew stuff that's been updated for 4.82. That includes custom firmware such as Ferox and other applications such as Multiman, Game Sonic Manager, and XMB Lock. Now, there are a whole bunch more other homebrew apps that have been updated, but I'm not going to list them all here. If you go to, like, say, PSX Place or even the PS3 Hacks Reddit, you can actually find them all there. I highly recommend you do it because you know, if you have a modded PS3, get the most use out of it that you can. That's it for this episode guys, and thank you so much for watching. But before I go, I do want to mention one thing. I did actually get my hands on a PS3 that is compatible for the PS3 exploit. So expect a tutorial in the future. I am still trying to get everything set up correctly on that PS3 just so that way I don't have to download any other games from my PSN accounts and whatnot. So it took a good day just for me to get all that set up. And also I'm still doing some more research on the best way to deactivate accounts and activate accounts on PS3s while connected to a custom firmware because I don't want to get my account banned. So I want to make sure I do everything correctly uh, for you guys so that way you also do not get your account banned and PS3 banned because that would just not be fun. 
As far as last week's question I asked you, what console was the very first console you actually owned? I'm gonna go with the NES. Back in the day, my grandparents actually bought the NES for me and my other four brothers, and I remember just playing that for many, many hours on end. I remember playing Duck Hunt, Super Mario Brothers, and Super Mario Brothers 3 were really the main three games we played. I just remember putting a whole bunch of time into those, which my next question for you all guys, speaking of time, is what game have you put the most hours into? Or, you know, what game have you put the most gameplay into, I guess. I don't know, whatever, however you want to put it. I will answer that question for you in the next video. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. If you did, please hit that like button as well as that subscribe button and that little bell icon so that way you don't miss any other videos I make. And again, all the links to the homebrew I mentioned will be in the description below. That way, you know, you don't miss out on those awesome homebrew stuff. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next video.